I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this video. I'm sure there are a lot of Sadhguru fans that have clicked on this video just to dislike it without even watching it. So for the rest of you, please help me balance out that like to dislike ratio by hitting the like button. We Indians are from a culture where some of us believe that People that look like sadhus, like sages, sannyasis, or yogis, call them whatever you want, uh, they're people with great knowledge and if you sit and listen to them, maybe you can gain some of their knowledge. And some of them are right, except no, they're not. You don't gain knowledge as a result of your age. You might grow wiser as you grow older, but you do not gain knowledge. And you can't just sit around and meditate or do yoga and expect uh, knowledge to just come flying into your mouth. If that were the case, there would be so many kids that would try to skip school. But unfortunately, some people don't realize that. And because of that, they end up following these gurus in search of that elusive enlightenment. These gurus end up gaining massive followings that give some huge power, fame and influence. And seeing this, some people are more than ready to jump on the bandwagon. These are people just trying to capitalize on the potential fame and they can literally come in any age. I found this guy on Instagram and he just claims that he got enlightened when he went to the Himalayas and all he does is give non-actionable vague advice on how you can be enlightened like him. Now this video is gonna focus on Sadhguru. If you don't know who he is, first check and make sure you're not living under a rock because this dude is extremely popular. He holds hundreds of events every year. That is every year that doesn't have a global pandemic. Uh, Bollywood celebs hold talks with him. He's got followers in the millions. But at the end of the day, he's a human being just like any of us. And therefore he has agendas, personal, political, financial, and he just says and does things that serve these agendas. But at the same time, he's a very charismatic individual. And because of the conviction with, with which he speaks, it's very easy for people to think that what he says is true. And he is saying those things for their benefit. Now, I spoke about confirmation bias in a different video, which I'll link up here. Uh, and confirmation bias is what's responsible for this feeling. Basically, everyone tends to look for and notice things in a way that agrees with their own ideas. Basically, what Sadhguru is doing is uh, saying things that their followers uh, either already believe or automatically will accept. Now, the more he conducts speeches, the more people listen to him, the more his followings grow and the more his businesses grow. And ideally, there's nothing wrong with that. The problem comes when he tells his huge number of followers messages. He gives them messages that are demonstrably wrong. I feel that in such a position of influence, you have a certain responsibility to be honest with your followers and deliver well-researched information. Now, things that he says are clearly demonstrably wrong and I'm gonna demonstrate why they're wrong in a while. Uh, but with a little bit of research, either from him or I'm sure he has a lot of people to do that for him, uh, he could have avoided saying many of those things. But uh, he doesn't. He says them anyway. And uh, that tells me that he has agendas. And when you do something like that, you open yourself up to a lot of criticism. And that is what I'm doing here. First, I should define what pseudoscience is. It's things that seem scientific, but have no real basis in science. You know, the things that Sadhguru claims his grandmother told him. Your grandmother told you this, didn't she? Didn't your grandmothers tell you, you should not drink water from anybody's hand, do not take food from anybody, there is a certain way. Now I'm gonna look at the scientific claims that he makes 
and I'm gonna show you why they're wrong. There are many videos out there on YouTube uh, that do the same thing. Uh, you can also check those out. I found this compilation of uh, pseudoscientific things that he says uh, and the channel owner has done a great job. I'm gonna leave that uh, link in the description. Now, he makes a lot of claims that have absolutely no basis. And I'm gonna take a look at some of them over here and yeah, let's refute them. First, this one. The moon is on fast forward today. All the 28 days, all the 28 faces of the moon, you see right here. The cooked food will go through the phases of its deterioration much, much more rapidly in a subtle way than it does on a normal day. Now, this has got bullshit written all over it. Eclipses and faces of the moon are two completely different things. This is the shape of the moon that you can only get during an eclipse. And these are shapes that you can only see as a face of the moon. This is because eclipses are caused by shadows that are cast either by the earth on the moon or by the moon on the earth. Lunar eclipses happen because the earth casts a shadow on the moon. Now, phases of the moon are caused because the sun is the only light source in the solar system and uh, uh, when a sphere like the moon is lit up by, the, by a single light source and you see it from different angles, different directions, that gives you phases of the moon. Now, I'm sure everyone understands why eclipses happen, but in case you don't have the best idea of how phases of the moon happen, uh, check out this video. This channel does a great job of demonstrating how the phases happen. So because eclipses and phases are two completely different things, you cannot say that food ages 28 days during an eclipse. That's terrible logic and absolutely nothing happens to your food during an eclipse. Uh, my previous video was on just that. Check it out if you like. If this is an atom, proton, neutron, electron are all embedded in it like these dots. They thought it was like that. Then by the time you came to high school, they wrote a different picture. They wrote one central circle which contains proton, neutron and electrons are going around like planets in different formats. Yes, you've seen those pictures? But now they know it's completely wrong. And we have always known it's completely wrong. That's why textbooks never ever interested me because when I look at it, it looked dumb. Sadhguru greatly trivializes and mocks science here. Uh, this is not how science works. Scientists are not unsure of their work and the models and theories that de they develop. They don't randomly go about saying, oh shit, we made a mistake, we're wrong again, what do we do now? No, that's not how science works. I made a video in the past about this exact process, but basically, Science is a process of observing things and developing models that are refined constantly with new observations. And that's exactly what happened with the atomic models. A model is just based on the observations so far. When there are new observations, models have to be refined. Now, Sadhguru often just mocks science. He says that, oh, scientists don't know shit about what they're doing. They they make mistakes often. They're, they admit they're wrong. They figure out that they don't know how things work and they don't know what to do. But we yogis, we knew all along that things were this way. Darwin's theory of evolution is only 152 years old. Adiyogi spoke about this over 15,000 years ago. We always told you, the yogic systems always insisted that the microcosm and the macrocosm are made the same way. And at the same time, he makes some claims that he backs it up with scientific evidence. He says there's scientific evidence for some of what he's claiming. So is there any scientific evidence? There's substantial scientific evidence today. 
about how the molecular structure of the water can be rearranged without changing the chemical structure, even with a simple thought or a touch. There's absolutely no scientific evidence, by the way. Uh, and my question is, Sadhguru, do you see any value in science? Like, you can't both be mocking it and then using it as... and then using it to back up the claims you make. Like, you should maybe decide whether you want to go one way or the other. The problem is, if it goes from the East, it is superstition. If it comes from the West, it becomes science. <laughs> That's where it is. That has to change. You're a generation of people. There is a lot of pseudoscience that comes from the West. Take chiropractors, take psychics, uh, take all kinds of astrology and horoscopes, take religions like Christianity. These are all based on pseudoscientific claims. And at the same time, there's a lot of genuine science that comes from the East. Modern day India is extremely scientifically advanced. The achievements that ISRO has made recently are absolutely incredible. Forget just modern India, go back to the past. There are a lot of scientific achievements that have been made by India in medieval and in ancient times. You, you have Aryabhata, you have many astronomers and mathematicians, you have uh, the number system which was developed in India, you have uh, Shushuta who practiced plastic surgery and described his methods and the instruments he used way back, like, in, like thousands of years back. I hope by showing you all of this, you take the words that he says with some amount of caution. Whenever he makes a claim, if he doesn't back it up with uh, evidence or data, don't you have no reason to believe it. You always have to research things for yourself and never blindly believe him. See, in science, there is no such thing as an authority. You don't just take someone's word at face value. That never happens in science. There are scientific experts, and experts can always be wrong. That's why they always cite sources. Whenever they make a claim, they always back it up with data and evidence. So once again, when you hear anyone, not just Sadhguru, anyone, even me, whenever anyone makes a claim, they have to always cite sources for that claim. Now, I'm going to cite my sources down in the description. You can always look them up and not take what I'm saying just for my word. Now, at the end of all this, if you want to ask me, is there anything I like about Sadhguru? Is there anything I, I admire? And there is. I really like his beard. I would trim it a little bit if I were him because it looks a little unkept, but... That is one glorious beard, dude. I wish I had that. Now that's it for this video. Like it if you like my content. Subscribe if you like my content. And comment what you think about this topic. I want all of you to please stay scientific. And remember, science is dope.